Right, this is part two of me swapping my Bobber high torque motor out for a speed twin high power motor. So if you haven't seen part one, go back and watch that. I explain why I'm doing it, what my plans are for this motor and what my plans are for the other motor. So in this video, hopefully by the end of this video, the engine will be out. I'm gonna show you me draining the fluids and taking the throttle bodies and bits and pieces off and Oh, I need to make a cradle for the engine as well because I jacked the other engine up on the jack and it tends to tip over, it's a bit unstable so you'll see me doing that as well. So hopefully the engine will be out in this video. Right, at this point I'm going to have a look and see what sprocket this has got on it. I think off the top of my head it's a 17 tooth and the one on the speed twin is a 16 tooth. So I've got to, mate, at this point I've got to decide whether I'm going to leave this one on or actually use the one which is on the other motor. Ideally, if you change the sprocket, you need to change the chain and the other sprocket. You need to do all three together. But that's for longevity, so it lasts. And all this stuff, I'm not really bothered about that. I'm just bothered about ease at the moment because it's all going to be swapped around and changed around. So. This can be a pain in the bum. All this stuff, getting this lot off, so it's, it's not too bad. That's held on with three bolts. There's a couple of bolts holding this backing plate on, which holds the brake fluid on. I need to drain the coolant anyway. Don't want to have to get involved in draining brake fluid, but I should be able to just tuck this out of the way. Right, I'm hoping that. So yeah, that's a 17 tooth. So, because I don't want to actually have to change this after I've taken the engine out because it's not so easy to stop that from turning and this is pretty tight apparently. This is a little bit higher geared than I'd like it since I had the 180 tyre put on so I think I will put the 16 tooth sprocket on the front so I'll leave that on the other motor. So that makes things a bit easier as well. I might have to shorten my chain by maybe a link or so. We'll worry about that when we put it all back together. I did have, I did play around with the 42 tooth sprocket on the back here at one point, on a drag strip, but I found it was no quicker, it was just a, more of a pain in the ass to ride on the road. If I did a lot of twisty turns up in the mountains and stuff, it'd probably be really good, but for what I do, it was too low geared, and this engine's so torquey, it, it pulls through high geared stuff anyway. The chain does need to be removed. Um, I don't, it's easy for me because I've got a split link in this, so I put it in there so it's easy for me to change it to drag strip and stuff. But normally you slacken the axle off, slacken the adjusting nuts off here, and then you'd let these off, the wheel would come forward a bit, and you should be able to just get it off the front cog there. But I'm gonna take the chain right off with my split link. Right, so changing the coolant, I've cut myself one of these water bottles up. I've got another one without the thing cutting it, so I can actually tip my coolant into it, because I'm going to save it. So take that little clip off there, which I've just broken. Handy little tip for getting these clips off, if you don't break them, is to actually squirt some WD-40 on, and then they slide up the pipe a lot better. So anyway, I'll just drain that out of there for now. Yeah, it can be quite brittle these pipe, these clips. So squirt a bit of WD-40 on there. And that will slide up that pipe a lot easier. Well, it would do if it wasn't broken. Hang on, I'll probably get hold of that a bit. I hate these clips. There you go. See? Well, soapy water would do the same thing, I guess. Anything sort of slippery. And he's off there like that. So I take my coolant cap off to let it bleed through. So squirt me slippery stuff on there. These, these pliers here are a really good investment for getting these clips off. You can get ones on a cable as well, which are really good because they ain't getting in the tight spaces. 
but you can use sort of normal pliers for that but it really is a pain in your ass but these clips are pretty good these clamps are good get him over there like that sort of gently and carefully pry it up with a screwdriver it helps as well you squirt WD-40 or you or some sort of penetrating fluid in there. And coolant pisses everywhere. Why just leave that in there like that to drain, actually? I, I actually paused the camera then, it doesn't take it, it takes a bit longer than that. I'll try and work that. A bit. I reckon you should just pull off. Which it does. Right, draining the oil is just a case of undoing that little bung there and letting it drain out into a suitable container. That's my oil filter there. To get that off, I'm not taking it off because oil's going to go everywhere. I'm going to leave that on so that oil don't run out the engine. It's just a case of putting your 17mm spanner on and I'm doing it. That moved really easily because this oil filter, or the, my mechanic who services for me knows what he's doing so he doesn't over tighten things like oil filters. So that's why that was loose. You don't need to over tighten that sort of thing. SBW Mechanical and he's in Brisbane. I'll put a link in a description for him. That's normally pretty tight because it's got an actual crush washer on there. So replace that every time you do an oil change. Right, and I'll leave that there and I'll go and have some lunch or I might go and edit this video. It's not a bad idea once you drain your oil and you've tipped your oil out. I've tipped this into another container so I can get rid of it. To make sure there's no shiny bits, any metal or debris in your oil there, because that'll be an indication of wear on your engine or something broken or something like that. But this is pretty good, looks all right. There's a little eight mil bolt hole to top this radiator in. of course the radiator hose at the top there. Right, I'm probably just going to tie this out of the way once I get the hose off so I don't have to touch, <laughs> so I don't have to find the other end of the plug for this thermo fan, which is up in there somewhere I reckon. There's lots of wires up there because I've got my control unit up there for my air fuel ratio gauge and stuff like that. I don't really want to mess about up there. I don't know how well you can see this on the camera but I'm trying to get it so you can see what I'm doing from the other side. I'm going to squirt my slippery stuff there on the top hose and all over the camera lens. I like to do that. I'll get me pliers on the hose clamp there. It's a bit fiddly to get in there. But these pliers are really good because once you've got them locked on, they don't move. Right, yeah, it's there. And I will tie them up here somewhere. I'll get zip tight, do that. I'm actually following the Haynes manual with what to do doing this. And I don't think it's quite right with a few things because it says I've got to take the swing arm bolt or the bolt for the engine goes through a swing arm, but I don't think that's the case looking at it. And it also says take the rectifier off. But that doesn't look like that's in the way anyway. I know this plug here needs to come off because the other end of it is on the engine. And it looks like I've got the start of that pesky oil leak where everyone seems to have. So that will be fixed. But I've got to take the... Um, cover off which holds the alternator windings anyway which is i believe where that goes to do the supercharger to put the supercharger 
casing on it. So that will get done then. Right, that's the rectifier, which is just bolted on to the bottom there with two bolts. And this is why oil leaks out of these wires, which is a problem people have. Because the other end of this wire is on the rectif is goes the alternator windings, which is inside the engine case. So it's got oil in it. And the oil travels down through the wires. I'm not sure what the fix is, so I'll find that out and I'll let you know. Right, a handy little tip to get plugs off like this. They can be a real prick. So you squeeze that in and pull and nothing happens. The trick is push, push the plug down in that direction first before you hit the little release tab and then, then it should come up a bit easier. I'll give it a little helping hand with the screwdriver here. There, and that comes off lovely. Yeah, look, that's got oil in there. See that dripping out? Clutch cable needs to be released. So I'll undo them two little eight mil bolts there. And that's just push in and pull out like that. I was gonna drop the engine a bit before I actually started undoing stuff. So if the engine's moving, it's easier to see what's coming off. But I decided to keep it there to take the throttle bodies off and stuff because people wanna know how they come off while the engine's still in. So that's what I'm gonna do there. So, I haven't looked at the manual or anything, but it looks to me like they just held on with the clips there. There's probably something mounting it as well, and I assume this plug has to come off, which it doesn't with that bit of the throttle body there. Okay, so all this has to come off. Yeah, it does nothing. It just makes it look like a carburetor. Put that back on so I don't lose it. And then a little Allen key for the hose clamps. I don't think it's quite going to be that simple. There must be something else holding it at some point. Right, there's a vacuum line on each side which needs to come off. Vacuum lines like this, they're normally pretty tight. I sort of stretch them a little bit and then ease the bottom off the screwdriver. That one come off pretty good. Oh, they do just pop off. There's nothing else holding them. There's also some wires in that plastic mounting thing on the throttle bodies too. That little vacuum pipe's a little balance pipe between the two. There you go. And there. There's also another plug on there. That'll be for that'll be for the potentiometer, I guess. For the um or is it that one? I don't know. One of them would be for the potentiometer and one would be for the throttle valve. A slide off of there that it's just a little clip there and that's that slides off of this mounting thing and then you can get both hands on it to push them together stick that in and then pull that apart and that's them off so these back lines are oh, they going to a t-piece so you can't get them on wrong I'll take the injector plugs off now as well it looks like I've got to pull that bit of tape off to Get that rubber boot up nicely. Plug it. Actually, I might take the rail off and pull the injectors out and then pull them off. Where's my trusty 8 mil? There he is. two spaces underneath the fuel rail there. Some bolts. And then the injectors should just pull out. I don't know if they'll come out. All right, now I can get to the plugs on the wiring a lot better. Just snip them two little corners in there and pull that off like that. I just unclip the other side. And then a fuel rail with the injectors comes off like that. A little bit of fuel in it. There's some injector seals there which probably need replacing. And the ignition 
key housing needs to come off. I'll take it off with a bracket what's holding it on rather than these two bolts here. Unless there's a hidden bolt. Because that's got to come off to go on the other engine anyway. Because the other engine wouldn't have had that there anyway because it's a speed twin. So he's off. So that will tuck out away somewhere. Maybe over here somewhere. Let's get rid of him. The wire for the starter motor is going to have to come off. These wires here, what run through to the other side, they're going to have to be unclipped and unbolted, that little cover there probably. And you can see a lot more of what needs to be done now. There's not that much to it really. Spark plug leads. Tuck him out of the way. Right, that's me why it's me rectifier. Go through here. I need to get that plug out of there somehow. I'll do that when the engine is unbolted because I think that's not going to come through like that. I just got to remember when I go back up with the engine how it goes. Yeah, it's wedged between the frame and the engine bolt. I'll have to wait to get that off. I don't have a 5mm bit to fit in a socket for Allen keys, that'll make this easy, so I'm just going to use a normal Allen key and a spanner for a lever. There you go. And I'll spin that out like that. And this one here actually holds me the aluminium cover on for the wiring cover. So I made that bracket there and that uses that screw there. So that comes off. It's got a brake pipe, no coolant pipe going through it. No, it isn't. That's all right. Loosen this wiring loom. On the other end, that's already off. Just unclip that. You see what we're going, what's going on with the wires a little bit better. So that's the starter motor wire that can come off. so I don't lose him. Let's unplug that. It's probably a gear shift sensor or something. And the earth lead needs to come off this side. That little wire, oh that must be for a rev counter or, or something I've got on or maybe me AFR gauge. That's, that's not a normal wire what's normally on there, it's just that earth lead there. Well, I think goes straight to the battery. It looks like it's nearly ready to come out. So just there, look, is the temperature sensor, engine temperature sensor. I'm not gonna disturb it this end at this stage, so I'm gonna find the other end and unplug it. I can see where that's plugged in. It's just around the other side there. Right, so the plug's just clipped up there and it's just a, a plug like that. So what you do is you push that little bar down and pull it out like that. And that's there. Right, so. <laughs> It looks like now it is ready to come out, so I've just got to undo the mounting bolts. That one there, that one there, and that one there, and it should drop out. It's nowhere near the swing arm, so I don't know what that all was all about in the Haynes manual about that. But this engine, there's a lot of weight here. So when you get a jack under it, it tends to want to fall off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a cradle for it to fit in a jack, to make things a little bit safer and easier and then for it to, easier for me to manoeuvre the um, engine around. Also as you can see the sump's right down here and then the part, heavy part of the crankcase with the crankshaft in it is right there. So I reckon I'm going to have to, I'm going to make the, so the jack can go under here, there'll be a support here and then a support here to stop it tipping backwards that way.
I hate drilling holes, so whenever I see spare bits of metal hanging around like this with holes in them like brackets and stuff, I grab them. Because this is what I'm going to do now. That's going to... Instead of making brackets to go on here and drilling holes, I'm just going to cut that off there, weld that straight on there, and I've got my bracket already. This looks like this might work out. See, if I'd have made brackets, I just would have made them straight out here, but this has got this nice 90 degree bend on it, it might cut straight up to my thing -o. Which it does, look at that. Well, that come out a lot better than I visualised it. So the plan is, that fits in there like that. It's got a nice flat surface that's to push against, so when it's got weight on it, hopefully it's gonna be all right. It's a little bit loose that way because I haven't really got the proper size tube in, so not really sure how well that's going to work. But we'll give it a go. At least it ain't going to fall off and see what happens. I don't know if that's going to be in a good place or not, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Right, we'll put one of these on a brake lever, like that, because it might get a little bit wild. Right, so let's get some bolts undone. I'll slack them all off, I'll slack them all off first and leave them in there. Just to hold it in place before I get too wild. These two bolts go all the way through the engine, so you need to get to both sides of it. On this side, I've got to put stuff in the way. I might take this bolt right out now, because that's probably the most difficult one, and while it's loose and sliding around in there, which it is. I'll take the opportunity to take it out. How do I get to that? The open end up there, I reckon. That's it. Let's get the big boy on it. Just that one, just to the other side. Right, all them bolts are loose, so I'm actually wondering if I've missed something. There's something else holding the engine up, unless I've, unless I've just got it jacked up that well. Yeah, I did have that jacked up well. I had that jacked up very well, actually. So, now, I'm hoping I can just let this jack down. Right, I'll stop there, because there's another coolant hose with a radiator cap on it at the top here. That's got to come undone. There's actually a frame rail under the back here between the two halves of the frame, what the engine sits on at the back, so I'm going to try and tilt it forwards and then bring it that way. 
a bit worried about this bit because I don't know how well balanced that is on the jack. It's working there. To this point where I just check, make sure there's nothing else attached to the motor that I'm going to rip off. Yes, there is. There is something under here. The battery, the battery box has got a bolt going to it. We'll deal with that. Come out. Oh. That's that bit out. Maybe this engine isn't as well balanced as I thought it was. I thought it was going to go the other way. At this point, I can get the rectifier wire back through because there's enough space there now. So, pull that through. Can't see any other pipes or wires down there. That's clear there. And we're good to go. Ignition switch. So that looks to me well, it is actually out. So now we've just got to try and get it out of here. That stand ain't bad actually without knocking everything over. I'm probably going to knock the camera over now. Right. Everything takes so much longer when you're filming. Actually, it's quite stable now, I think. What? One engine. I might do some more work on that stand, sort that out. But that's, that's the engine out. So I'm going to spend a few hours now cleaning up the bits and pieces I can't get to with the engine in. I'll take this opportunity to do that. So the next video, you'll probably see me putting a new engine in. Have a great day.